in the far north of North America, beyond the Arctic Circle, there's a remote part of Alaska that gives out at the icy Arctic Ocean. This is the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, the largest and wildest wilderness in the United States. In the frozen winter time, only musk oxen and a few other hardy creatures are about. But in the summer, 24-hour sunlight brings forth an astonishing abundance of life. It is this wild and fragile place, a sanctuary for hundreds of species of animals, that is now threatened with destruction in the form of oil development. Starting just 60 miles from the Arctic Refuge at Prudhoe Bay, the nation's largest drilling operation sprawls across Alaska's north coast. These oil fields take up a huge amount of land, as much as the state of Rhode Island. What used to be a complex ecosystem is now a heavily polluted industrial site. Already, 95% of Alaska's north coast is open for oil extraction. Now, the oil industry wants to drill into the remaining 5%. And the area in question is the biologically crucial coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. The only way to get to the coastal plain of the refuge is by bush plane. It's an exhilarating journey, flying over the steep, jagged peaks of the Brooks Range. Eventually, the mountains give way to a gentle plain where, as far as the eye can see, there are no roads, no structures, and no signs of industrialization. There are no airstrips either, so bush pilots hunt for safe landing places at the base of the foothills, swooping in on a rare stretch of smooth tundra. Visitors to the refuge quickly encounter a diversity of wildlife. Some people simply pitch their tents and hike, and enjoy the rare opportunity to see what nature does when left to its own devices. Others take guided raft trips down the pristine rivers that drain the Brooks Range. Being in the refuge is just a really wonderful experience. You have the ultimate freedom of daylight 24 hours a day. You're not gonna see another person. You're only gonna see the group you're with. Whatever stresses you left behind are gone so quickly because you're just so amazed and so want to enjoy and, and learn and understand what's going on in this habitat that it's, it completely takes you to a different world. In the Arctic Refuge, rivers meander where they will. Plants and animals, too, follow their own ancient patterns with the regularity of the seasons. Perhaps the most famous of the animals that grace the refuge are the caribou. Caribou are a wild form of reindeer. So if you've seen pictures of reindeer, Santa Claus, the sled, for example, then uh, you know that caribou look very much like that, with a bit, little bit longer legs than reindeer. They are very social. They, they, they like to be in groups. And one of the reasons for being in groups is that it's, it's good to have a lot of eyes when some animals are feeding, to have other animals looking around. So if wolves or other predators are approaching, they'll all be uh, alarmed at the same time and can run away before the wolves get within striking distance. These caribou are part of the porcupine caribou herd. Every summer, they leave their wintering grounds in Canada and migrate to Alaska. They cover a tremendous amount of ground. A single caribou travels an average of 2,700 miles in one year. Their goal is the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge. Finally, the caribou reach the coastal plain. 
this place is a safe place for them to have their young. There's um, good vegetation there for their diet. It's mosquito free, it's predator free. It's a flat area where um, they can all come together if need be. And uh, it's there that um, they have their young. We have 130,000 animals that migrate to this, this area each year. In the course of two weeks, you might have 40 or 50,000 calves, newborn calves, that flood this landscape. So it's extremely vital as a birthing ground, habitat, and as a nursery ground. The home of the caribou, and so many other Arctic species, has been officially protected since 1960, when the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge was created. But to thousands of native Alaskans who live on the edge of the refuge, the Gwich'in people, the caribou and their habitat have been revered for as far back as their oral tradition takes them, thousands of years. Our people believe that we're one with the caribou. In our creation stories, there are stories that we came from the animals. Native people, we believe we came from the animals. The Gwich'in story is we came from the caribou. Whatever happens to the caribou happens to the Gwich'in and vice versa. For thousands of years, the, uh, the Gwich'in have been uh, relying on the porcupine caribou for their existence, meaning for their cultural, spiritual, and holistic uh, uh, way of life. About 85% of our meat supply comes from the porcupine caribou. And when the uh, herd is migrating past the communities, uh, either going to their winter range or back to the calving grounds in the spring, our people would uh, uh, take their harvest needs at that time. It's the main source of food here. Nobody can afford to buy store-bought food here around here. It's, it's almost impossible. Jobs, jobs are very scarce here. There's little money here. But uh, with the caribou, uh, people around here don't have anything to worry about. The caribou calving grounds on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge are so sacred to the Gwich'in that they will not go there. We call that place uh, where the life begins. In our language, we say, uh, because, because we always took care of caribou and returned to care of us. So our life starts from there too. Caribou life starts there and we use it and our life starts there too. So we call it where the life begin. And it's a sacred place. It should be protected. We are the original indigenous people from this land. We have something here that we cherish and we want to maintain. Our people are concerned that drilling or exploitation of these resources are going to detrimentally impact the caribou herd, the land, and the other animals, and therefore impact us because we survive from them and have this relationship with them, and that's our concern. Despite oil industry claims to the contrary, there is no way to drill for oil on the coastal plain without permanently damaging its delicate ecosystem. The effect of uh, oil drilling and development of oil fields on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge would primarily be to interfere on displaced animals from habitats that they would use. For the caribou, it would restrict their rate of movement. We find that in the oil fields that do exist in the Prudhoe Bay area now, that that is a major problem for caribou because there's so many pipelines, small pipelines coming from the different wells, and all of the gathering facilities, the roads, and the, and the uh, camps that where people live, the airfields, all of these interfere with the movement of the caribou. The oil companies insist that with new technology, they can now reduce the damage caused by oil drilling, leaving a so-called small footprint on the land. But that's only part of the story. They can do a small footprint for a part of the operation, and that's the drilling operation, getting the oil in, out of the ground. 
But thereafter, when it comes out of the ground, you still have the industrial complex that exists up there today. You're talking about miles of gravel roads. You're talking about powerhouses, living quarters, uh, everything you can dream of, pipes going in all directions, pipes and facilities to re-inject the water back into the ground, re-inject the gas back into the ground. You're talking about a continuing major industrial complex up there. Oil development on the coastal plain would force the caribou into the mountains where the predators are, and that would be extremely risky for the herd. Through research, we found that the caribou can't move away from that certain core calving grounds in order to have their young and expect to have a healthy population. If they try to move to another location, then what we're going to have is we're going to have a high mortality rate and it's going to be disastrous for the Gwich'in uh, people. Beyond the problems drilling would create for the caribou and the Gwich'in, there remains the question of the wilderness itself. The Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is an important part of our nation's wild heritage. Are we ready to sacrifice it? If oil development occurred on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge, the wilderness character of the area would be gone forever. The wildlife would be disturbed. The area would suffer from oil spills. Each year in the Prudhoe Bay oil fields, there are hundreds, over 400 oil spills a year in the Prudhoe Bay oil fields. Do we want that kind of activity in our greatest wildlife refuge? Those in favor of drilling in the refuge say that oil drilled in the U.S. would give Americans lower oil prices and help with today's national security concerns. But the situation is more complex than that. For one thing, the oil would not be available anytime soon. If Congress decided today to give permission to drill, it would be six to ten years before the first drop of oil would move through a pipeline. It would take that long to get established. And even though the oil would be drilled in America, it would not necessarily benefit Americans. This isn't going to be our oil. It's going to be the oil of oil companies who have done the drilling. And as the oil of oil companies, they sell it on the world oil market. That could have a small effect on the price of oil in the world, but it's not going to have an enormous effect. It's not going to significantly change oil prices in, uh, the, in the United States. The percentage of oil from Anwar would probably amount to about 3% of the U.S. production. It's a, a rather small amount. And the question is, do we want to sacrifice a unique environmental region that can never be returned to its original state uh, for a rather small amount of petroleum? We could save as much petroleum as probably in the entire Anwar Reserve by just proper inflating the tires on our automobiles. There are conservation steps that we can take. We can drive more fuel efficient cars. Just by raising the fuel efficiency a few miles per gallon on passenger vehicles and SUVs and light trucks, we can reduce our imports, become more nationally secure if we become less wasteful. Americans created the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to protect an incomparable diversity of Arctic wildlife. Now, the refuge itself needs protecting. The Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is such a special place. I've done a lot of backpacking, I've done a lot of wilderness experiences, and there's no place like this in the world. There's no place where you can go and be so removed and never run into a single person and see the habitat and see the wilderness and see the animals like this. There's just, there's just no, there's no place like this in the world. And I think it would just be so tragic for us to destroy that just for a few barrels of oil.
When we first gathered and we first committed to protecting the birthplace of the caribou, it wasn't just something that was out of the blue. There was a lot of prayers, there was a lot of ceremony, and that's where we got our guidance that led us to do this. And so I believe that because it came from a spiritual foundation that we will win. We have to be successful.